94 Pontiac Trans Am or even a Camaro Z28. Gonna do front brake pads, rotors, and calipers, okay? First thing you need to do is jack it up and support it properly. And then you need to remove your front tires. That's a 19 millimeter for the lug nuts. If it's got wheel locks, make sure you find your wheel lock key. And then also you'll need a 3 8 Allen socket. You might have to tap it into the <clears throat> slide pin, which is like that. And those are on the back side. One here and one or one down here. One right there. Okay. Right here on the round part. Okay. So there's two of those. You might have to tap your Allen socket into them because they're full of rust. And remove both of them. And then when you get them both out, you just have a flat blade screwdriver. And I need to pry the caliper off like so, like that. Good top and bottom. Okay. And when you get the caliper out, go ahead and lay it up here on the top. And if you're gonna replace the caliper, if you're gonna replace the caliper, then you'll need something to restrict the flow at the brake hose so you don't lose all your brake fluid because you don't want it running dry. It makes it harder to bleed. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna use a pair of vice grips. I don't have the proper tool to pinch it, but you wanna have them just so they barely pinch it so they just barely restrict the flow of the fluid. You don't wanna crimp down at it because you don't wanna damage the hose. Okay, we're not pinching it flat. We're just pinching it enough just to restrict the flow of the fluid inside the hose, okay? And then we wanna remove the hose off the caliper if you're replacing the caliper. And then it'd be a 7 16 for the banjo boat or 11 millimeter, okay? So you wanna remove that off the back of the caliper and it's that bolt right there goes to this hose. Okay, there's my caliper. And right back here is my banjo bolt right here. You can remove that banjo bolt. It's a, it's a bolt with a hole in the middle of, it, middle of it with another hole in the side of it. Okay, so once you get this bolt out, you need to tap on the hose part here to break it loose because sometimes it gets bonded on there with the rust. Okay, here's my hose. It's got a, a ceiling washer there. And supposed to be one there too, but it's probably stuck on the caliper. But when you get replace the caliper, you want to replace your washers also. And most of the time they give you new bolts, okay? And this is the banjo bolt. Got a hole in the middle of it and there's a hole in the side of it, okay? If you're gonna reuse your caliper, you'll need to get your slides out, the sleeve out of there and clean it up and put some new sill glide in there. And you also need to push your piston back in and then clean up the surface on the piston and then also remove this pad and clean up the surface on that one also. Okay, we're gonna replace the rotor. Sometimes the rotors are bonded onto the hub. So you need to hit them with a mini sledgehammer to break them loose. Raise some penetrant on them to help break them loose, okay? This one's already loose, okay? So we're gonna take that off. These are kind of heavy, so I gotta do two hands. Once you got the rotor off, you need to clean up the hub. Make sure it's the surface is clean. This one's all rusty. Just make sure you hit it with a die grinder with some sandpaper, clean it up best you can. Try not to remove a lot of the material. You just wanna clean it up so it's nice and smooth and removing the, the high spots, okay? Then you wanna clean up your slide. It's right here for the calipers and the pads. Clean those up. All right, then once you get those cleaned up, put some caliper slide lube on them. And also when you get this cleaned up, you wanna put some uh, NSCs on here, fine film, and then you can put your new rotor on there. 
Okay, if you're using your old calipers, you need to push the piston in. So you use an old pad and a C-clamp, tighten the C-clamp up and push the piston in. So if you're replacing the calipers, then you need to get it ready. You need to get your pins out of the way. So they're not sticking out in your way. Just tap them with a small hammer, tap them in. Put your inner pad in and then put your outer pad on. Same thing with your old copper. Put your pad on and your outer pad on. And your anti-squeak clip goes towards the rotation of the rotor. Okay? The rotor's going this way. Okay? Do I need to get this up there? Or even your old one with the pads on it. And then you got your rotor on there with some ANSI's on it, on it and uh, clean your rotor off with some uh, soap and water or some degreaser or something like that. Uh, Windex, glass cleaner. And uh, so now I'm ready to put my caliper on. When you get your caliper on and you can start your Allen head slide pin bolts and then you need to snug them up okay you got your calipers on you need to torque your side pin bolts to 30 foot pounds and uh, 30 to 35 foot pounds for those pins with the allen so once you got those done then you need to hook up your uh, brake line so you need to get your new banjo bolt and your two washers one washer on each side all right, here's your banjo bolt and your, and your ceiling washers. It's got one on each side, just like that. All right. And make sure you got your caliper on the right side. Make sure the bleeder's on the top, okay? Because I've seen people had the right on the left and the left on the right, and the bleeder would be on the bottom, okay? So the bleeder goes up on top. All right, so now you get your bolt started, and then uh, snug it up, and then you want to tighten it to... So like 19, 18 foot pounds, okay? Okay, you got your banjo bolt tight, you got it torqued down. Now you need to do is remove your clamp, remove your bleeder, put some anesthes on the threads, put the bleeder back in, but leave it loose. So that way, hopefully it can gravity bleed. And when you see no more bubbles coming out, you can tap on your caliper to vibrate it, to work the bubbles air from around the piston and then when you see no more air coming out and you can snug them up then you need to go inside and push the pedal to the floor a couple of times and that way it pushes the piston out and closes the gap and also allows the fluid to go around the piston a little bit better go ahead and tap on a little bit more and then open the bleeder and see how see how much air comes out if you don't see any more air coming out then you go ahead and snug them up Okay, then you wanna go inside the car, start it up, push the pedal to the floor a couple times, make sure you got a good firm pedal, and then come back out here and then re-bleed them again. Open the bleeder, see if there's any fluid coming out, any air, no more air, close the bleeder, and also you're good. Sometimes you might have to take the <clears throat> reservoir cap off to help them bleed, because sometimes it doesn't allow them to flow through, so. That's where I'm at right now. So I gotta remove the cap to allow the, the gravity bleed, okay? Okay, I took my cap off, put some fluid in it, and look, it's dripping. Go like that, and I drip a little bit more. Do the other side. Okay. and then go ahead and close the bleeder. Okay, I started the car, pushed the pedal to the floor a couple times, shut it off. Now I'm gonna double check to see if I got any air in it. You see the air? I had a bubble right at the beginning. Let's 
see if it's dripping. I don't see no more air. And it's dripping. So, close her up. Snug it up. Okay. I'll go do the other side. All right, there we go. All right. See if you can see the air. You see it spit? Oh, look at it, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's when you thought you had all the air out. Let it drip for a little bit. Show you how it's dripping. Dripping pretty good. So, oops. Actually got some more air out. Hmm, that's running pretty good. I'm gonna go double check the other side. Okay, now, now that you got your brakes blood, now you can put your tires on, you can torque your lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds, lower it down to the ground, go inside the vehicle, start it back up, push the pedal to the floor a couple times and make sure that you did seat the pads, make sure you have a good firm pedal because you don't want to have, uh, not, ha not have any brakes when you put it in drive or reverse, so you got to make sure you have a good pedal before you put it in drive or in reverse. Because if you don't pump the pedal up after you replace your brake pads, you got to take up that gap in the piston in the, in the, in the pad. And you won't have any brakes to a couple pumps. So you don't want to have any damage. All right. So that's how you do your front brakes. Hopefully I helped you out with, with this video. If you can help me out by subscribing, I, I appreciate it. Thank you.